Well, welcome to Coffee with Job on Tuesday morning. Kind of drich day. What do you think our society is most obsessed about? I think one area is absolutely sex. Sex is used for everything. It's used to sell, it's used to entice, it's used to blame. We're such in such a confused, dysfunctional society in that regard. I mean, people say that the church is obsessed with this. I don't, I don't think so, actually. Uh, there may be some who are, but in generally that's not the case. I find myself often, you know, being asked, what do you think about this particular sexual thing? And when I answer it, they just go, oh, you're obsessed with sex. Well, I said, but you just asked me the question. I think one of the reasons that our society is in such a mess as regards to this is because we don't accept the maker's instructions. So I have a petrol car. If I decide, you know what, I'd, I'd like it to be able to run on orange juice or on diesel or on milk and put these into my petrol tank. Why would I be surprised that it doesn't work? So Job, it's a fascinating, uh, it's a well-known verse, the beginning, because it's associated with uh, the Covenant Eyes program, computer program about internet porn, but I think there's much more to it than that. Let's read from verse 1. I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman. For what is our lot from God above, our heritage from the Almighty on high? Is it not ruin for the wicked, disaster for those who do wrong? Does he not see my ways and count my every step? If I have walked with falsehood or my foot has hurried after deceit, let God weigh me in honest scales and he will know that I am blameless. If my steps have turned from the path, if my heart has been led by my eyes or my hands have been defiled, then may others eat what I have sown and may my crops be uprooted. I think that's probably enough for today in terms of the verse we look at. Now, what's he talking about? He's saying that he hasn't sinned by desiring a virgin. Now, a rich uh, ruler like Job would have had plenty of opportunity to abuse his power. As men, largely men, but also women, but largely men have done over as long as humanity has been around. Sin lies in the inward intention of the heart and not just in the outward act. And Job is saying, I did not lust after any of my servant girls. Uh, I... You know, I remember once sitting on the tube and just being utterly astounded at the men who were just leering after girls who were on there. Now, there are a whole range of different issues in there, you know, but Job's saying, I'm just not going to do that. Looking leads to desire in the heart, which in turn leads to lust. Now, I don't think he's saying, I, I, I never found anyone attractive. That's not the issue. The issue is he didn't fantasize in his mind. He didn't desire. He... He, he had the power to put that fantasy into practice. Proverbs 6, 25, Do not lust in your heart after her beauty, or let her captivate you with her eyes. Matthew 5, 28, But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. He knows that disaster will follow if he disobeys God on this. He knows that God sees all his action, knows all his thoughts. Chapter 7, verse 19, he's already said, Will you never look away from me or let me alone for an instant? He asked before every action, what will God think? It's not the fear of man, the fear of being found out by other people, but the fear of God that drives Job, not the fear of consequences. I think the call to sexual faithfulness is one of the hardest. It's about purity of the heart. And by the way, that, that means men and women. And then verses 5 to 8, he talks about the scales. He's talking about deceit and dishonesty in business transactions. Now, this is another area. I remember speaking of somebody who's a Christian preacher and also a businessman in the area and uh, some non-Christians saying, oh, yeah, never do business with him. He's always cheating. What a terrible witness. I guess the man would never have thought of committing adultery, but this is just as bad. And he's saying, George Job is saying is, I didn't do that. 
Psalm 24 says, Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart and who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. Well, you examine your own heart. I examine my own heart. What if we do sin? Well, there's a sense in which, first of all, we have to repent. And that doesn't just mean have a sense of remorse. It me means an endeavor after new obedience. And sometimes I think we, I remember Alistair Begg at a conference when he was still a minister in Scotland at a youth conference I was at and somebody asked him, how far can we go? And he just took a bit of paper and he screwed it up and he said, I'm not answering that because he said, if you're asking that question, you're saying, how far can I go up to the line? And you've already crossed the line. So. I made a covenant with my eyes, just don't do porn. It's so easy, isn't it, on phones and everything else, just don't do it, whether you're male or female. Don't encourage others to lust as well. Show repent, repentance. And I guess what was it Thomas Chalmers called the expulsive power of a new affection. There's a lot of issues that people have to deal with in this one. All of us have our issues. And yet, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could say that we made a covenant that we didn't break. We should be striving after purity. And when we stumble and fall, we look to the one who is pure to make us pure. God bless you and see you tomorrow. Bye.